Tracy Chapman released Fast Car in 1988 and it reached number 6 on the Billboard charts. No one can deny this is a really emotional song, but why? What makes this song sad? And is sad even the right word to describe it? Let's take Fast Car into the chop shop, see why it pulls out our heartstrings and what songwriting tips we might learn from it. Hi, I'm Tony from Songwriters Chop Shop. The song starts off with this chord loop. The song's in the key of A, but it starts on the four chord, D. Starting on the four chord gives the progression a feeling of being disconnected from that home chord of A, and the rhythm of the chords adds to this. Both the home chord of A and its relative minor, the F sharp minor, both fall on weak beats in the bar. It gives the progression even more of that disconnected feeling. Listen to the difference in the feel of that progression if it was to start on the home chord and hit all the main beats of the bar. I've put it in a different key to make it easier to hear. That sounds a lot more grounded and resolved because we can really feel that home chord sounding like home. With Fast Car, it's like the music is looking for home but it keeps missing it. Then over the chords we have the higher melodic notes. And if we take away the rhythm of that riff, listen to the sounds of those higher notes rubbing up against the chords and how that makes you feel. Putting all that together with the rhythms, the music is telling us the emotional story of the song and this is all happening around a constant A note, but instead of that A feeling like home, it's just creating more tension. I'm not telling you how you should feel when you hear this, but for me that A note and that A chord represents the present moment, but it's getting lost underneath the rest of the music. Like the singer's present moment is getting buried under the tragedy of the past she's trying to escape from and the hope of the future she's trying to run to. I'm not suggesting Chapman consciously sat down and worked this out like a math problem, but looking at it this way and using our imagination, we can maybe get a glimpse into her creative process. Coming up with music that creates this kind of mood, it would be a logical next step to have the song's lyrical and melodic theme reflect and express those feelings. Then the vocals kick in. Before we look at the vocal melody, let's look at something else that adds a ton of emotion to the song, her voice and singing style. There's so much character and emotionality to it, but why? Apart Apart from her being a great vocalist, she uses all these passing notes to slide in and out of the main vocal melody. You get a fast car. I want a ticket to anywhere. It's subtle, but it adds a lot of emotional character to the performance. The rhythm and the shape of the melody is really conversational, and it uses a call and response form. You get a fast car. I want a ticket to anywhere. Maybe we make a deal. Maybe together we can get somewhere. The emotion that's produced by the notes and the melody can be missed because of how quick they happen due to its conversational nature. But let's slow it down and listen to those notes and how they interact with the chords and what feelings they evoke. The melody uses a lot of thirds, fourths, fifths. You get a fast car. I want a ticket to anywhere. And sevenths. And those semitone intervals really create a lot of emotion. Any place is better. Starting from zero, got nothing to lose. This is a story song, like The River by Bruce Springsteen or Fairy Tale of New York by The Pogues. She tells the story by painting a picture of the situation. In the verse, she never tells us how she feels. Instead, she paints a picture and lets the listener do the feeling. Words form pictures, pictures paint situations, and it's the situations that evoke emotion. The lyrics are pretty matter of fact and have a conversational rhythm. This contrasts with the sweet, tense, melancholy tones, creating a rich emotional subtext to the lyrics. 
Nearly every verse starts with the line, you've got a fast car. Apart from using repetition to make the title memorable, it also acts like a mantra. It's one of the ways this song creates a hypnotizing effect. When I listened to an instrumental version of the song with no vocal melody, I was almost ready to pull my hair out waiting for something to change. And that feels like a pretty accurate description of the singer's experience. There's a sense musically in the verses that something is coming, but then it goes on for three and a half verses. It's almost too long, and that's a lot of repetition considering that the chord loop is only two bars long. The music is painting an emotional picture of her life while the lyrics stick to the facts, as if on the outside she's just getting on with her life, while underneath she's disconnected from life, waiting for something to change. Then it moves into the shorter verse. And it really sets up the end of the song to have that gut-wrenching emotional impact. Again, I'm not saying she worked all this out beforehand, but that doesn't change the fact that this is what it's doing. The section is shorter so it immediately grabs our attention. The other verses usually focus around two ideas. This one only has one idea, to make a decision. It has an even amount of lines that add up to an even amount of stressed syllables. And perfect rhyme types. This is telling us that she really means what she's saying here. The word we in the other sections has always had the word maybe in front of it. That doesn't happen here. She's not saying maybe we could do this. She's saying it's you and me all the way. In fact, look at how the pronouns change throughout the song, telling us about the state of the singer and fast car's relationship. She's asking an important question and that's signified by the unresolved melody and the two bars of space left after it, leaving us and Fast Car to really think about it. These are classic songwriting techniques to get the listener's attention and let them know that she's saying something important. Then the melody drops into the next section with its descending melodic shape and starting before the bar like it can't wait to come in. So remember when we were driving. And the melody in this section revolves around the root note of A. And the A chord and its relative minor, the F sharp minor, both land now on strong beats of the bar. This is another reason that I feel that A symbolizes her present moment. This one good memory where hope seemed like a possibility is her present moment. It's where she lives. In between trying to escape her past and dreaming of a better future, this is more real to her than anything else. In the lyrics she uses the active present tense version of the verb speed, not sped. And the chord progression here is the same as the verse, but each chord is played now for a full bar, like she wants to linger there for a little longer. The drums even come in and pick up the energy, indicating her excitement. And we see more metaphorical language, like the city lights spread out before her, the possibility of a future living in the city. City lights lay out before your arm felt nice, wrapped around my shoulder, and I, I had a feeling that I belong. This is the emotional high point of the song. It leaps into the melody an octave higher than the verse and has a dynamic wave shape. And at the end, she's singing B some one three times. It's uneven, it's unresolved. And the section is also five bars long, which is uneven and unresolved. Repeating B some one four times will have been resolved and it might indicate a positive statement. But she sings it three times. This indicates that she's frustrated and hopeless. And again, Listen to the sound of those notes working against the chords. Experience the sound and the feeling they produce. In the other verses, musically, things repeat, but the story keeps unfolding. In verse 5, things aren't happening. She's changed from dreams of the city to the suburbs. Why? Well, the suburbs are a better place to raise kids. And this is a beautifully implicit lyric. She never states this outright. Maybe that reflects the fact that she doesn't want to tell her partner that she's pregnant. Things have taken an unexpected turn, and she's trying to convince herself everything will work out. And the next, I remember driving, comes in quicker, almost like she needs to escape her crumbling present reality more often. She more frequently retreats back to those memories. In the next verse, things have really gone to shit. She has no plans. Finally, she tells us how she feels. That half verse doesn't come back in till the very end, and we see the change from we've got to make a decision to you've got to make a decision. 
Wanting more from life and not getting it is definitely unfortunate, but I don't know if it's sad. We all want more from life, rich and poor alike, and not getting it most of the time is just a fact of life. So what makes this song sad? For me, I don't think the story is sad. I think how the story is told and what the telling of the story shows us about the human condition is sad. It's a brutal and honest look at the human condition, but that's what all great songs do. The singer is not equipped to face her present reality because she's never been shown how, and this leaves her powerless to affect any real change. Instead, she goes on repeating the same mistakes her parents made, and the only way she knows how to cope with it is by retreating into her fading memories of fleeting hope. 